Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave, getting ready for another boring day of price action for Bitcoin as it gets stuck in the mud once again. Actually, we do have a few things to talk about, especially on the short-term timeframes following up from yesterday's analysis. But uh, I would like to wish you the best of the best and the happiest of the happiest on this very nice overcast Tuesday morning, um, which I'm actually very happy about myself. I fucking hate sweating and uh, no sun is better for me right now. Anyways, uh, as always, um, I do want to say I will probably not be on Twitch today. In fact, I should probably not even announce that anymore but i will be on my gaming channel uh total crown for anyone who happens to be interested in um in the total war series or especially strategy games uh the link will be in the comment section below again don't feel obligated to go check it out but uh but if you are interested in such things then uh then of course i'd love to hang out there as well anyways um looking at the crown trading application over here we do see that bitcoin is still stuck within that open interest range it is gearing up towards the top side of the of the range that have been kind of postulating but remember this is all experimental data for us right now because we really haven't had access to this for more than like two weeks now and realistically I can't trust any other um, any other uh, venues um, uh, data because uh, what we found is that a lot of a, a lot of websites just massively wreck their, their wreck their reporting whether it's intentional or not and by the way there's a beautiful tweet by CZ of good old Binance you know the most very uh, highly esteemed exchange in the world and he was explaining how um, how they are how they're better than other exchanges because they only record their volume as one Bitcoin for whenever whenever one Bitcoin trades where they were postulating that other exchanges record it as two Bitcoin. No, that is so fucking wrong, by the way. So fucking wrong. That's actually incredibly illegal in traditional markets. Obviously, we're not dealing with traditional markets right here, but the same sort of accounting and, uh, and, 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 and knowledge does apply. Whenever you trade one Bitcoin, it's recorded as one fucking Bitcoin. You don't get the buy and the sell. It's simultaneous for the love of fucking God. Anyways, uh, I think that I should probably get off that topic for right now. And let's go check out um, the open interest over here, which again, like I said, is still within that range. Um, perspective range, experimental range, I should say, between 1.5 billion and 1.7 billion. So what I really need to see here is a break of the high term time frame range plus a move outside of that range on the open interest. Again, 1.5 billion to 1.7 billion. You can see that we are so starting to really gear and in, in inch our way up towards the top side of that range. But I still need to see price action break a, a relevant level. Uh, in this case, it's still more or less the same to the upside, about 98 to 9900 to the downside for short term, 9500 region although long term still about 88 to 87 50 ish region around our last prior low um one of those areas needs to be broken plus open interest shattering above or below that uh be below that range i would imagine that if bitcoin does come down and break 9500 we'll probably see open interest come back down below 1.5 billion as well and create a new range as bitcoin kind of fall uh you know finds its bearings between 95 and 88 100 uh, ish region and for the top side of course 98 uh 98 to 9900 ish region plus a break above i really need to see open interest being added to be a believer in that um in that particular breakout anyways looking at the bitcoin dominance literally the same from what we've seen yesterday fear and greed index more or less the same uh just just a delta of one right there so let's go look at price action charts right now and realistically <clears throat> like i've been saying for the for the higher term time frames i really have nothing new to add here if you want a much more in-depth look at it then i would say um then i would say go to this weekend's past videos as i'll go in much more detail there but for right now as you know as it stands i stick with what i've been saying even though right now it's looking a little bit more under pressure but uh, as long as bitcoin is one having an uptrend two having all major moving averages uh in a bullish splayed out attempt with lower periods trading above higher periods plus a golden cross along the way and still writing the 21 expansion moving average i'm not bearish on a chart that ever looks like that doesn't mean that bitcoin can't come back down and tag around wherever the 55 is of which that's actually right around the 88 to 8900 ish level still would be constructing a higher low at that point but for right now, you know, I, I do think that it is still warranted. And again, that's not to say that it can't do that. But uh, as you as you as you can see here, multiple chances, multiple attempts to get below the 21 exponential mean average on the daily and still higher lows get printed on a wick basis, which is actually rather impressive. So what do I make of that? Well, we can once again very likely move up that point of failure 
uh, a little bit more to whatever the low is of this week, which is actually 94.50-ish region. So there's two ways to get the downside now for the short term, as we've been saying. One of the ways is, well, the more con the more confident way I'd say is uh, is either a four hour delta closure below, let's call this 9,500, whatever the spike low is here. Yep, 9,500 to, uh, to, to the T. The other way is perhaps taking the low of, 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 of what you just saw Bitcoin put in, I guess, earlier this morning, right before I woke up at about 9,500-ish region. The problem is, is that because BitMEX and all the major exchanges are showing different numbers here, I don't feel all that confident um, using that for GDAX. I'd much rather use the outlier with BitMEX, the reason being because if it does come back down here, then we would really expect this to actually break as uh, you don't, typically don't get multiple chances to buy an area like that on a rising wick basis. Um, again, doesn't mean that it can't happen. And that's why I do say that, uh, you know, waiting for a closure and, you know, below that region, 9,500, once again, is probably, is, is, is in, at least in my opinion, a lot more of a solid way of doing it. But, uh, but I do think that using the wick right here as well could probably get it at 94, uh, 65 on Mexico. I would not use the other exchanges because they're like a hundred bucks higher and it doesn't really break the range, so to speak. And BitMexico seems to actually still get price action more or less right on the uh, on the long term. Anyways, um, so if Bitcoin were to break that area, I would still be looking for a move back down to test the bottom side support of this uh, of this current perspective ascending triangle, and that actually be directly in line with the four hour three seven seven exponential moving average here, which actually has been respected quite a bit uh, throughout the last couple of years of history for Bitcoin, and that'd be coming in somewhere right around about eighty eight fifty ish now and rising over time. So you've naturally seen this go from what was once about eighty seven hundred, our last prior low as well. Well, on the higher time frames, now moving up to 80, uh, 8750, then 88, then 8850, and that's kind of where we are at, uh, at right now. So I would be looking for a an extension of about 600, 700, 700 bucks if we were to actually break this area. But first things first, need to actually break it. And uh, and for right now, Bitcoin's you know still kind of grinding out the top side a little bit better. And I would put um, and I well I would put more emphasis on that because well it's closer to breaking to the top side than the bottom side, and that's actually a lot more of an interesting prospect to begin with, just because. The upside's a lot more, um, a lot more uh, uh, free, I suppose you could say. Whereas the downside is going to be a little bit diabolical, a little bit, a little bit difficult, just because if Bitcoin were to come back down to this level at about 8850, 8900ish region, I would actually look for a bounce there, at least on the first pass. The question is, the, does the bounce get sold into or not? And realistically, it's not until we get back below this prior low right here at about 8700, 8750ish region and close at the very least a 12 hour. Um, below there or or a wick below the low of this at 8600 ish region where I would really look for this to come down uh, pretty damn heftily and look for an equally as impressive move to the downside uh, very likely back down to the low 7000s um, I think our chart right here still accurately gets it yes it does there would be a measure move to be made from this actually which actually they do play out pretty damn well uh, to both sides funnily enough even though you typically don't see the counter trend one um, but in this case you know we can see that it also lines up incredibly well with with uh, with long term fibs or maybe not so much long term but from the last uh, from the last low to the last high of the of this pro of this past run these fibs match up incredibly well with our last few wicks in these regions and getting these last major breakouts and breakdowns both to the downside and the upside um, for the past uh, for the past few months, so I really like the confluence there. And if Bitcoin were to break to the south side, you know, I would look for and uh, I would I would look for an immediate or uh, immediate is a terrible word to be using, but I would look for a, for a rather quick move down to the three eight two at about eighty one hundred, probably a bounce there. But I, I I think that it would just be that, just a bounce and come back down and uh, and perhaps bottom at the not point five at about seventy five hundred. Also, this historical breakout right here going in all the way back to April and then also our accumulation zone from uh, from December 2019. Uh, I think that that could be a potential bottom. I mean, if, if Bitcoin actually did break to the south side and uh, and if the, and if that area did fail, then I look down to the 618, which is right at about 6,900. Same sort of implications there as well. So for right now, um, obviously, I want to be very clear in stating this. I'm actually not looking for that to happen. Um, as long as Bitcoin's above 9,500, especially, I don't really see any real reason to be bearish in the short or medium term um, or, 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 or long term for that matter at all. But uh, but again, you know, short term and medium term, this would be kind of the trigger for that. And then long term, at least in the way that I kind of define it myself is uh, 8850 right here. So as long as those conditions are not met for the downside, I, I really don't have any 
like bearish trades be made. Um, doesn't mean that it can't happen again, but I need to see proof, not promises before putting like actual, um, actual money at risk here. By the same token, am I just like blindly buying this area right here? Fuck no, I do not buy the middle of ranges. That's just my personal trading style, which, you know, may or may not be confluent with yours or, 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 or maybe it's not even relevant at all to you, in which case you should probably just turn off this video and, and, uh, and well, go about your day, I suppose. Anyways, um, my point is though, is that, uh, the upside is a lot more, a lot more close to where we are at, to where where we are right now because not only is 9900 the bottom side of this blue box which is you know about 200 bucks away from where price action is right now but if, if bitcoin can break that area even just close a four hour build above 9900 especially 10,000 for the more conservative people out there as well and I, I think both of these get it more or less the same and i think 9900 is probably completely fine anyways um at least that would be good enough for me again you know everyone's everyone's different everyone has their personal proclivities but um but if that were to get taken out we actually do have a measure move from this sending triangle to be made to the upside and that would be pointed towards a little bit north of 11,000. The reason why that is very interesting here, though, is because if Bitcoin did work its way to 11,000 and fulfill that measure move, which they do actually have a pretty damn good um, history of, uh, you know, of fulfilling those off of triangles, not other formations, though. Triangles seem to work pretty damn well in cryptocurrency land, at least from the research that I've seen. Um, that would include a higher high above our February highs right here at about 10,500 on a WIC basis. On a daily closing basis would be about 10,400. On a weekly closing basis would be about 10,000. 200. If Bitcoin could come back up, or sorry, if, if Bitcoin could take out any one of those three criteria that I just laid out, again, making different differentials between wick, closing, and time frame, then I would look for extension significantly further, um, not just to 11,000, but 11,500 in line with the with the major area that Bitcoin's been getting front ran at since, you know, January 2018. Major meltdown here from 11.5 down to 6,000. Same thing, double top rejection a month later in February, then about a year later in July, same thing. August 2019, same thing. If we throw in the volume profile, you already know where I'm fucking going with this, but it's a macro change of behavior. You don't need to be a fucking technical analyst with years and years of experience to see this. Um, you can see that, you know, the second that Bitcoin goes back above this area and closes above this area, we have a macro change of behavior. And realistically, you know, you can go off these areas over here and kind of outline 14 and a half thousand as potential short term resistance or, or, or long term resistance, whatever the fuck you want to call it, 16 and a half thousand, even 20,000. But realistically bitcoin would just be very bullish at that point um for the macro but uh, but of course right now where bitcoin is is kind of a little bit of a precarious place just because uh if it does put in a high here meaning that bitcoin comes back down and uh, and especially breaks the low side of our range at about 8800 ish region then this is going to be another macro lower high and that's going to be uh, almost three years now of straight lower highs not fucking good man not fucking good at all but for all intents and purposes i actually do think that this looks pretty damn good here you can even see at that 10,500 ish level right here volume profile definitely tails off quite a bit and quite aggressively all the way up to that 11.5 level as well so you know it's it's one domino that leads into the next of course and with uh with that comes with great with great time frames because uh, comes great perspective and we can see that momentum also is technically still up here right now for weekly stokes and will remain to the upside as long as bitcoin price action is above 88.50 i love how that lines up at the bottom side of our current range right now by the way but keep in mind that that would suggest that bitcoin does need to start moving to the upside if, if bulls are going to take advantage they have the balls in their court especially during this week and and uh and 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 it will naturally come back down if failure to try the upside um, is not had, I, I would say, honestly, by this week, I really like to step away from making time sort of components on that because I don't really think that can be accurately done. And I want to say that I'm not I'm basing that only off of my experience, which is which, you know, is 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 not going to be statistically relevant. So it's not really a good source of edge. But I looking at looking at the way that the charts are right now you know it would seem that uh, if bitcoin bulas are going to take charge they do it you know this week um l taking longer than that is the hesitation here is not going to be interpreted as strength i'll put it that way the reason the big the other big reason why i say this is because traditional markets and, and not just traditional markets but all fucking markets all fucking markets are going to the goddamn moon right now well everyone's talking about how this is the worst depression ever it's bullshit go fuck yourself you know nothing just kidding 
brain, you know everything. You're a genius, and uh, and I will make sure to assuage whatever uh, whatever social justice uh, reforms that you want on Twitter. Anyways, um, <laughs> anyways, anyways, looking at this right now, you know, this is Nasdaq futures, which are it's kind of like leading the charge, and everything in their fucking mother is going to the goddamn moon right now. That's not just Nasdaq. That's E Mini futures for Spy, which is actually not making a new high, to high uh, as well. So it is relatively weak in comparison. Uh, if we look at uh, uh, Japan futures, or is this Japan futures? No, it's just Japan uh, re regulars. Uh, but still going up as well. And if we look at uh, even, I think, uh, uh, India having a nice have a nice move up, although, again, relatively weak here for sure. Um, even gold, you know, having a little bit of a comeback. I, I do still think that this one comes down. My point is, though, is that um, when you have a market like this, you can judge your relative strength and relative weakness in relationship to the leader of the market. Right now, now it's the actual leader of the market. And to, to, to kind of like siphon that off a little bit more, it's really Microsoft and Apple that are doing all the heavy lifting. Everything else is <laughs> maybe not as strong, but uh, but hey, the winner takes all in this game. And, uh, and so for Bitcoin to not take this time to actually break above this week, that's kind of why I'm saying it's a little bit of a ticking time bomb here because it would imply relative weakness. And you really don't want to see that when your strong stocks, when your strong leaders are rallying. Think of it as like the, the generals of the market. This is the way that my mentor used to relate the concept to me. He's like, you have, you know, you have your big indices, your big bourses, and, and you, you know, your, your high cap stocks. They are like the generals. And when the soldiers, aka the lesser, you know, the lesser attractive stocks, the lesser uh, performing stocks, don't follow the generals as much, you got a big fucking problem. And eventually, you know, the, 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 the charged to whatever side is going is is very likely to dissipate um so in this way right here you know it, it is a little bit concerning that bitcoin hasn't taken that next step up but i wouldn't necessarily say that it's fully concerning just yet because still need to give a little bit of time and more importantly it's going to have a try here i do believe so that's also why i do still lean to the upside here just because traditional markets are are, are blasting their way through i mean we have new all-time highs on nasdaq and it's going to make new all-time highs uh even more, I, I, I even have a measure move here pointed towards the, the not uh, the one spot 414 extension, um, which is also a, a measure move from this inverted head and shoulders uh, reaccumulation formation, basically at like 11,000. Um, I do think that 10,000 is going to be a nice stop as well, or 10 and a half thousand, some, something like that. Um, and overall, I'm very, very bullish on NASDAQ right here. And I really have no reason to not be bullish on this, especially as long as it's above the last prior high at about 9,700. Now, if it does break back down below 9700 we will have a massive 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 swing failure pattern here and i'd be looking for a big bad down at the very least to about 9400 probably 9000 ish region though and then i look for a potential bottom there as well maybe even maybe even a, maybe even another continuation drive uh, to the downside but the, to be clear i actually do think that there is going to be a pretty damn big pullback in um in traditional markets probably maybe later this month or or, or, or next month something like that um but i do think it's going to be the next big opportunity for you know for um for a nice major low and what could that mean for bitcoin well if traditional marks come down the history for the last 10 years has been these these marks seem to be pretty fucking correlated on the macro not on the micro not on the day-to-day -day. if you're looking for correlations on a day-to-day -day, you are you're being misled if you're looking for the macro con uh, correlations that's where that's where you get the whole that's where you get the whole picture more importantly but it's also where you get you know the 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 that's where you get the insight that a rising tide lifts all ships you know it's you can see very clearly that when bitcoin or sorry when traditional marks are rallying more importantly uh bitcoin's rallying and, and vice versa for the downside as well it's you know like fucking clockwork every goddamn time um uh, within about half a year of time. Anyways, um, so yeah, you know, I just went into a fucking whole tirade on that. Um, so let's go back into Bitcoin right in over here. So as it stands right now, Bitcoin quite literally in the same goddamn range as we saw yesterday. Sorry for all of the uh, believers out there. I use my language uh, very loosely. It's just a very lazy way to express myself. And I really only mean it as a term of endearment. I do apologize about that. It's really not intended to harm um, if that, uh, if you, if you do find some of those statements, uh, offensive anyways, uh, looking at this right here, sorry, let's go back to GDAX chart. Uh, let's go look at our low term time frame momentum oscillators. Four hour stokes are going to come back down here, as you can see, and they will remain to the downside as long as Bitcoin price action is below, um, about 9,800. Interesting. So that's kind of like a last little closing high right here. 
in the early morning hours. Looking at the three hour, it's already coming down as well and will remain to the downside as long as Bitcoin price action is below 97.50. Looking at the buy hourly, coming down from the same posturing. So now we're seeing confluence between, between all these thus far and remain to the downside as long as we were below essentially the same area, a little bit uh, kind of cut it to the middle actually. And hourly will actually be down as well as long as we are below 97.50. So all of those are actually in agreement with each other, which just tells me that we are gonna, we're very likely to test the downside of the range here. The downside of the range being, um, this 9,500 horizontal that I've been kind of uh, playing around with. So it does not imply a breakdown of it, but it does imply that we probably do test the downside of the short-term range of which we kind of already saw a test of it to be fair. But again, the same sort of logic does apply more sideways here without breaking 90, 9,500 of the downside does align more with the bullish take on this. However, uh, you know, uh, you know, how many more days can it can it stay within here without uh, without without really becoming suspect? Well, I would say give it to the end of the week, but uh, but sooner rather than later it would certainly be a lot better for the Bulas as uh, they're very close. But with things turning around against them in the short term right now, I would say that uh, at least short term probably going to see uh, probably going to see some testing of the downside of the range. Again, does not does not imply a breakage of it. I still need to see price action confirm with either a four hour or a two hour delta closure below 9,500 or a takeout of the Mexican or BitMexico's wick uh, below right here about 90, uh, 94, 65 region. So both of those probably do get it. The wick going to be less um, less confidence, of course. But uh, but looking at four hour stock of all two percentile, we are seeing it expand once again, which is a little bit concerning as well because momentum officers are turning to the downside here, and the moving average is further confirming this. And by the way, remember this is coming from that single digit read that we saw uh, just a couple days ago uh, on the fifth of um, June, which precipitates typically or any time that we've really seen you know a single digit read on four hour stock of all two percentile um, uh, uh, specifically, we do see you know hundreds of dollars, uh, sometimes even thousands of dollars of uh, price action being spun upon that last last example that we can pull up is 23rd of may that was this move here from about 9300 to 8600 so that's a 600 700 move uh time before that was this guy right here from 7500 all the way to 9000 that's a multi-thousand dollar move of course uh time before that was this guy right here from 66 to 75 so almost thousand dollar move there as well time before that was this guy right here from about 62 to 72 so a thousand dollar move there as well you get my point in that essentially the reason why this is a little bit more precarious right now is because we are in expansion phase on these lower term time frame uh volatility percent uh, historical volatility percentiles which does suggest that we do have enough built up energy here to break uh that to to break one of these sides meaning that it is actually one of those times to really be paying attention because the next the next test or two probably gets it man probably does get it that expansion is going to come naturally uh as that is well that's just how maths work essentially so let's go check out our medium term time frames and see how they're operating right now we do see 10 hour stokes which actually do put a lot uh, quite a bit of weight on it's a little bit of a secret that i've been keeping for myself recently but um but does work pretty damn well 10 hours still holding it high still holding it still holding it very uh constructively actually and historical volatility percentile here is set to expand it's set to fucking expand last time that we were this low 26th of april that was a about two thousand dollar rally over the next week uh not good man not good uh, well i mean it's it's actually very good but still uh, well actually here for the bulas 10 hours actually looking pretty damn good i'd still be bullish on this um but needs to close this next 10 hour which closes in three hours and 58 minutes uh, above 97 30 to remain that momentum to the upside 12 hours same thing as well it did reject getting below the bullish control zone which is good which is which does which does add a lot of confidence or not confidence but does add um uh you know momentum to the upside here and we'll, we'll naturally remain to the upside as long as we are above 96.50 on a 12 hour closing basis. So now we can even come up with a shorter term range, 9,600 or 96.50 to the downside. Um, and, and essentially the same, or, you know, the same short term to the upside at 9,900 ish region, 10,000. If you want to be more conservative, same thing here on historic volatility percentile, it is wound the fuck up, man. It is, it's got down to single digits for about a day and a half. Last time that we were this low was actually all the way back in December in December 2019 right here before this major move from 6,500 6, to 10,500 realistically so we are looking at a big piece of price action here whether it breaks the upside or the downside so I you know I would really caution against getting too bearish here until until basically breaking this area right here but if that area does break 
I would expect a lot of downside to be spun off of that. That's why I'm talking about that low $7,000 number. By by the same token of the upside, a lot more interesting just because I think it's, you know, it just makes things a little more easier and people seem to be a lot more happy during, uh, during you know, during during upside times because it's just easier to hold on to shit, I guess. Uh, and fair enough, I, I you know, I, I agree with that. But overall, you know, it's, it's looking like it's setting up uh, very, 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 very soon. Looking at the daily as well, we are going to see the daily stokes have a fresh cross the upside, although <laughs> a little bit weak right there, um, but they will naturally stay to the upside as long as Bitcoin can close its next daily above 97.50. So really seeing all these guys come into the same area, although the short-term timeframes are really starting to flip around there, do a little bit of flip-flop, which is fine, but needs to add up um, uh, to each other uh, at the end of the day. So still still stuck in the range of fucking mud and patience here um daily rsi is literally flat as fuck flatter than a goddamn doorknob and uh looking at the two day i still like the two day still above all major movement averages all major movement averages have positive slopes and all major movement averages are getting divergent away from each other in that posturing that is bullish of course getting the golden cross right in over here testing it pretty much perfectly right on after that and above the white turn and simple the whole way through i really 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 like that long term you can see that long term this has been a damn good way to get bitcoins uh, long-term trajectory, I suppose, is maybe the better way of saying this. Um, anytime that Bitcoin's been above the 200 simple and it has a positive slope, those are your long-term bulls, keeps you long throughout these 70% fucking crashes too, which I'm not sure that you even really want, but if you are a long-term hodler, perhaps it's perhaps worth it. Same thing to the downside right over here, telling you bull trap time, telling you bull trap time right over here as well. And uh, more recently, you can see that we've retested it a couple times. 21 is getting divergence away from the 20, from, from the 200, which last time that we saw this was back on over here during this run from 6,000 to 14,000. And before that was this guy right here, bless you, um, from 300 to 20,000. And the time before that, going all the way back to the Genesis, essentially. So not really, not really fair to say. But, but my point is, is that you know these higher term time frames do seem to get things very, very well, especially with moving averages for the long term moves. We're also going to see two day Stokes hint at across the downside here. But let's see what it would take to keep them to the upside. Yeah, Bitcoin price action would need to close this next two day dildo above 98.50, which, by the way. It's closing to no it's not closing today closing tomorrow night at uh, at 8 p.m eastern time so it's still got another day here so we could probably say if continuation isn't had by you know by tomorrow night's closure on the daily uh it's going to start to gear the probabilities very likely back in this you know on the side of the downside but for right now uh still looking okay uh three day also same thing as well we could even use the last three day low at about 93.50 uh, region to kind of get the short term downside as well. Although then you're kind of cutting your margins a little bit uh, shorter, but still $405 move to the downside of the range anyways. Um, and, uh, and, and three day, three day momentum offsets will cross back up to the upside naturally with another close above 9,700, which it is, t uh, which is right at right now. And we'll be closing tomorrow night at APM Eastern time as well. So it does look like things are setting up for likely a move, uh, at or before tomorrow night's closure um at least if things are going to move to the upside that would kind of make sense with the momentums making a relationship between the higher term time frames the medium time frames and the low term time frames um so yeah uh overall i you know i do still remain overall bullish here but am i trading that way right now i'm not trading that way until i actually see the next break of the um of the top side range other than that um this would actually really be the time to be trading options uh with volatility very 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 low respectively speaking um, it's actually one of the few times where I do think that buying premium can work out. Looking at Daily Jewel, I think that this is um, very interesting here as well, as we've been saying. But uh, realistically, until you know, yes, that this is an this is an example of a very good sell signal, not a perfect one. You'd want to see it up here, but it is an example of a pretty damn good one, especially alongside a fib, a major fib as well. But the thing is, is that I do not look for that to play out any more than it already has, as long as Bitcoin as is at the very least above the 21 x benchmark average. So for all the fucking people messaging me for the love of fucking god with the jewel listen <laughs> listen and this will keep you safe in a lot of these jewel trades even though every time that i've disagreed with the jewel i've been wrong and and it's been right but i do feel very very strong about this one as long as bitcoin's above the 21 i do not play the downside and that's basically the short term range at 9500 or 9450 depending upon how aggressive you want to be there or, or or using this wick low at 9350 if that area does get hit off to the downside i would look for a very quick move down to the 50 um exponential moon average on the daily um very very likely probably a very very likely a bounce there as well and then we get to come back and play the game of 
is this bounce just a bounce or is it about to be a reversal? Well, fun times ahead, fun times ahead indeed. And of course, uh, if you are in the TA program, I forgot to announce this and also the Neophyte program as well. You'll notice that there's uh, one new video for the Neophyte program and two new videos for the TA program. The uh, the one that's in both of them is 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 about a trade list, essentially just like trade checklist, kind of kind of a cool little one. I don't know how much I, I don't know how necessary it, was, it, it, it is, but uh, I do feel like it could maybe maybe help out a little bit. Um, and then for the TA program, there's a module on backfilling now, which I believe we're kind of seeing right here. Funnily enough. If you look for a backfill on this last weekly dildo, well, what was your open? 94.50. Very interesting, huh? Does kind of line up with that short-term range now, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. So, you know, more importantly, on the weekly, we see major moving averages in a, in a full-on bullish posturing. 10 simple getting above the 21, all above the 55, and all above, you know, the 89 and the 200 and the 200 simple. So, this is looking better here. And whoops, just dropped my uh, my ledger. Whoops fondling it in my hands and butterfingers let it go anyways uh well, we already looked at moment. Uh, we already looked at momentum um, oscillators, but uh, but as far as moving averages go, you know, anytime that I mean, I mean just looking at the 21, which I've covered a million goddamn times, and I said I wouldn't get into long term analysis here, but uh, but you know where I'm going with this. Anytime that Bitcoin's been above that yellow 21 exponential moving average, generally good for the you know since the genesis going back on over here. As long as it has a positive slope, I look at that as you know long term bullish with price action coming down and testing it a few times, you know, in between there, and then all major moving averages getting to a bullish posturing after those perfect tests if you're in the ta program again reference the ema module on what to kind of look for for those and I, I believe that that's what we're seeing right there at least until until we have another change of behavior which by the way the 10 simple is going to be where it's going to be right around your last prior low there so beautiful confluence there um and uh and now it's time to i want to see what cme's uh rsi is looking like as well okay cme's rsi is a little bit problematic here again this is another reason why i do think that um if bitcoin is going to get upwards continuation it like Likely does happen this week if this rsi comes back down to base on the exponential it's not going to be interpreted as strength it probably will bounce there again but uh but that's going to really start to look make this whole uh falling wedge break out to the upside make it look failed and i'd be looking for actually a big come down after that but for right now it's still you know a lot of a lot of days left in the week to go until we get our next weekly closure on at um on friday but uh but i need to see either this this high get taken out here at 60 or this low get taken out here at 55 Five, which everyone happens first is going to um, is is going to drive that next major uh, ma major breakout very very likely. Um, what we can do here is I I want to see I want to see um, what RSI level or sorry what price level would correspond to a new high on that RSI correlation to this guy right here. And um, it hold on. Uh, oh, I don't, I don't have it. Uh, ha, I don't have it listed right there. There we go. Uh, yeah, it needs it needs to close this next weekly above ten thousand two hundred sixty-seven actually to to make another high above that. So very interesting. Um, again, pressure pressure is on right now. Pressure is very much on. Anyways, um, okay, cool. So I think we covered it just about everything. Let's go back on over here. Let's check out expected moves chart. Uh, shout out to Bali for a new rendition of this, which actually looks really really cool here. I need to spend some time with this. Uh, with it, with this, with this new momentum also to right, right here, but this momentum one right here is interesting. Um, did get a positive slope yesterday. Now kind of flattening out once again. I'm very skeptical here. If it does turn red and confirm red by end of day, that that's going to be problematic. If it does, but it typically does not. Anytime that it does turn color, it's usually usually going to be sustained. Very very few one offs, but they definitely do happen. Um, as far as divergence goes for something like that, or 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 or. or um, uh, well, basically, just as far as divergence goes, I haven't really found too much of a use for that as well. It's just inconsistent. I think other tools get it better. But as far as momentum goes, it actually does work pretty damn well, especially in confluence with looking at the slope of the rings on the expected moves plus the um, uh, uh, plus the actual probabilities themselves. Anyways, in this case right here, we'll look at the same areas essentially. Uh, we'll do 9,900 to the upside. And we'll do 9,500 to the downside. And let's see what this is going to print as that's going to show the upside target probability is going to show actually 2% less than the short term downside, uh, which is 30, 32.09% versus 34% to the downside. That's on the next daily total closure. I'm curious what the 12 hour shows. It should be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more equal. Actually, nah, pretty much the same. 26% uh, to the upside on the next 12 hour closure. 27 a little bit less than 27 percent to the downside so so actually bears do have the ball in their courts right now here's what the four hour would show as well 
four, four is not going to be near either one of these. Ah, 8% is actually decent. That's actually, I mean, it's actually within the first hand deviation, so... Well, on one side, that is. But uh, <laughs> that's actually rather interesting. Um, anyways, going back to the 12-hour on the daily, technically speaking, the probabilities are on the downside right now, uh, just just barely by a couple percent there on both sides. But um, but I would say that uh, both of these having you know more than a 25%, in this case, on a daily, a 30% does suggest that uh, it's pretty much equally as likely. And it's very and what's more important than that is it's very likely that we do break one of the sides, which does mean and, and does really add on to what I was saying earlier about, uh, you know, with options trading right now, not the worst time to be buying, um, to be buying a straddle, maybe even buying a strangle. Uh, depending upon how you do it can always spread it out too but um but overall premium is a little bit more on the cheaper side and we are seeing the rings starting to they flattened out over the last day and now a little bit angled to the upside let's actually just see ex or uh, oh shit i was on futures this whole time let's so okay so 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 uh, so that is true for future ah on the current whoa this is very interesting this is this is what this was more in line with what i was expecting to see probabilities are actually massively in favor of the upside right now uh, 39 and a half percent uh, above target probability 27 percent to the downside and so future bars does suggest that tomorrow if we're still in the same range and we have not actually broken meaning above 9900 or below 9500 the probabilities will shift in the favor of the bears so it, it I, I feel very strongly about this right now Bitcoin is if it is going to move to the upside it does happen in this next day's worth of price action otherwise uh, it'll naturally uh, feel some forces of gravity looking at the 12 hour right here uh, rings are actually starting to squeeze up again as well and massively in favor of the bulls as well almost by 2x 30 36 percent versus 18 percent to the downside um, in this next 12 hour total closure on this current uh, 12 hour by the way so a lot of that does make sense and very, very interesting. Um, I feel very strongly about that. If Bitcoin is going to break to the upside, I think that it happens within this next 48 hours at most of price action. And uh, failure to do that probably does imply that we will come back down and test the, uh, the low 9,000s, upper 8,000s, something like that. And putting back on these tools right here, we can very quickly go over the most important to be, to, things to be aware of, and then I'll send you off. But uh, but overall, Bitcoin to the upside, 9,900 on a four-hour closure, or even just taking out that last wick high at basically 9,900 uh, probably does it. If you want to be more conservative, which uh, this is not financial advice, I'm not, I'm not a financial advisor, uh, wait for a, wait for a four-hour closure above 10,000. Probably both of those get it equally as well. I'd be looking for a quick extension to about 10,500. Keep in mind, that's where the last prior high is in the last few rejections as well. So probably a short-term pullback from there. But if that prior high is taken out at $10,550 on stamp, then I would look for extension to the $11,000 region, fulfill the measure move off of this ascending triangle right here. And realistically, uh, while 11,000 uh, does probably provide a short-term pullback again, I'd be looking for extension to 11.5 overall. And then we could talk about the macro range. By the same token of the downside, 9,500 is still very much relevant. If 9,500 does get broken, I would look for, like I said, a move down to about 88, 8,900 region. And then we get to play the game of does it bounce or not? And I'd imagine on the first pass, it will bounce. Uh, but if it does break below there on a on a 12 hour closure below about 88.50 to 8,900 region, or especially just go below this prior low right here at about 8700 that'd be a damn good indication that um you know we're going to be seeing 8100 and 7500 and maybe even 6900 right here anyways that's going to do it for right now i want to take another second to wish you well take care and until next time